Welcome to Bud Nixon channel. On today's episode, uh, I'm going to be building a quarter inch aluminum um, skid plate system. I was able to source this piece of fine material, quarter inch aluminum. We're going to mill it on the CNC that is over here. Kaddish. Right, so we're gonna try to make a skid plate for the front because after everything got raised up on the queue, you can see how uh, things are wide open. So now, uh, the skid plate is gonna be pretty basic and simple. Uh, I have a design idea in my mind. It will just have a couple of angles in it, nothing major, uh, and probably mill out something like a, I don't know, something in there that we can do on the CNC. Um, and then uh, TIG weld the, the bends to make sure everything is in place. Um, and then we're going to be all safe and sound. So stay tuned, watch some time lapse while I'm doing the work. Uh, I know I am not doing it in a very orthodox way because uh, for CADing I don't use CAD software, I use Coral Draw because that's just software that I know and to me it makes sense to run it uh, before I uh, end up vectorizing the file and assigning the toolpath over to uh, the CNC and making the, the G code as they call it. So anyways, uh, if this is your cup of tea, appreciate you staying along. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and do all the good stuff, ring the bell. Uh, get the latest updates stay tuned as things are rolling out and starting moving starting to move on the channel uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna try to uh, revive the channel a little bit with more and more uh, updates on what's going on in the shop uh, if you're not familiar with the channel this is more of a uh, overland off-road adventures camping snow wheeling snow camping snow catting um, Anyways, just really outdoorsy stuff. And then if anything that's not happening as far as outdoors, we are uh, doing various fabrication, woodworking, metalworking um, and such uh, modifications, uh, slab work uh, on the tables or custom logos or just anything, uh, wiring, what you name it, you call it. Uh, my shop is a jack of all trades shop where we can do anything from an engine swap uh, to a uh, cutting board. <laughs> So stay tuned, uh, click those all those buttons and uh, see what happens later. So I take on a bit of drawing and then see how things are gonna go. Let's see if we can put it Let's see if we can put it on the computer now. <laughs> Right, so hopefully uh, uh, the quick uh, the quick time lapse will show how the whole process sometimes goes um, as far as drawing up the file, at least how I do it, right? Drawing up the file um, and then putting it into the software that will assign the toolpath. So I'm hoping that you guys are able to see. So this is, imagine this is the sheet of material that I'm using and uh, these are the operations that will take place so we're going to reset the preview and from here we're going to assign the first tool path which will be the pocket I'm going to mill out the section where the the front skid plate and then the uh, then the middle skid plates are going to mix meet and because I'm going to sandwich them so that one's going to be milled to uh, to a point oops like this so that one's gonna be milled out, right? The next operation will be the openings for the bolts and then the logo. The next one's gonna go is gonna be the, the lines where I'm gonna do the bend. Uh, and the last one is the outside contour. That's the one that's actually cutting out the whole um, skid plate, if you wanna call it that way, right? So let's see if this works. Um, I think we got a deal. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go start up the machine uh, and uh, export the file over to that other computer that's gonna run the G code and we'll go from there stay tuned all right welcome back so what's going on is we have an Avid CNC machine for those who haven't been following the whole story behind the 
behind the scenes. Uh, this is a 5x10 CNC router setup. Uh, and the next step is to turn on the machine, get it zeroed out, and accept the file onto the computer that runs everything. So let's go to time lapse mode. Uh, you might have noticed that on uh, time lapse, last section of it, I was zeroing in the machine. So we, we had to what is called homing it. So homed it, you know, zero, zero point. Then I did a Z homing. So the machine knows how, you know, where the thickness of the material starts and such. And now it's time to um, throw in our G-code in here. And that's how that looks. So once that gets loaded up, we are ready to start cutting. So stay tuned and watch how that takes place. What do you guys say? It's pretty sweet, eh? Took a little bit of a process. Pardon the noise. So what's happening with the table, you might have seen me uh, having to do cleanup runs, is uh, I believe the MDF is absorbing moisture and Oregon being a very humid state, or not humid, I'm gonna say very moist, wet state. Uh, and I'm in a tent shop, more or less. It's not very a climate control situation uh, in my shop. Um, so I think what's happening is the MDF is uh, probably absorbing some of the moisture, obviously, and making it unlevel. So I had to reset my Z point, which is the depth of cut, uh, a couple of times to get this all cleaned up. But in any case, um, as long as you know what you're doing, it can be done. And I think this is so far pretty sweet. So these are the pieces or the, the slots where it's going to get bent. So this is going to be the top part. It's going to go this way. And then this part will be bent this way. And from here, you see, this is what the milled section is where um, we're going to line up the two thicknesses from this piece and then from the piece, the, the middle section. So let's get this out and uh, actually touch it, right? All right, quick lunch. Had to grab some lunch, but it's a late lunch. So you can see how thing has been milled. So again, these these two lines, that's where the bend's gonna happen. And then from there, I'm gonna TIG it, depending on the angles that we're gonna bend them out to. I think that's pretty cool. Q. Well, let's see if we can mount it up up there and see how things go. So again, this is quarter inch aluminum plate. Let's see how things will work. Well, this episode's about to wrap up because looky here, we got ourselves a skid plate. So this definitely gonna cover up and protect that frontal area from all the unnecessary elements. I'm not sure if I have to do any reinforcement to it, but I don't think I will have to. I truly do not believe it will be a necessity uh, as far as reinforcing it to anything stronger than it is. Because I think once it's welded up, it's fine. Worst case scenario, what I might do is uh, take like a one by one aluminum angle or even smaller and run a couple of ribs from the um, inside to just keep it aesthetically clean. Uh, but generally, I think I'm happy with the results. So just minor trimming, uh, minor adjustments, and then line up the bolts hole, bolt holes. I think I swapped the the smaller to larger vice versa or whatever uh, but in any case uh, so far so good give thumbs ups to this video and I guess we'll see you next time
Boom, a little bonus footage. Uh, well, apparently I was able to actually drop middle section and we're ready to cut. So let's go back to the time-lapse mode and get the middle section cut out. All right, I think we got ourselves a, a nice piece of aluminum now. Check this out. So, uh, by the way, if anybody looking, so this is deburr, very useful tool to break the sharp edge. And this thing comes with replacement pieces. You can hear it shaking inside there. Uh, so, let's get this uh, in there and see how that turns out. All right, well, today is Saturday. Good day to be uh, out in the shop. Beautiful, looks like a beautiful day lining up uh, for good weather. Uh, welcome back to the continuance of the episode. This is all gonna be one episode, but just two different days. Um, it was good Friday yesterday. Today is uh, good Saturday, I'll call it this way. So um, anyways, uh, we're working on the skid plate system. So today I figured I'll wrap up today this process um, and we're gonna be taking these seams to get them to uh, fit in. All right, you saw some tigging action. I'm not a very good tigger yet. I'm still learning. Uh, but, I mean, I'm able to fill in, this is like a quarter inch cutout right here, or even more probably. So, I think in general, this is protection wise, this will work and serve the purpose. So, stay tuned, enjoy some music. Alright, I think the time lapse will gonna, well, will look cool and gonna look cool. I just reviewed it. I think it's pretty sweet. Anyways, uh, do keep in mind that uh, I do uh, accept creative and positive advice when it comes to anything really. Uh, if you're gonna be a dick, you just go big, dig somewhere else. Um, I'm not a full-time TIG welder, never been in school, never learned. Uh, so basically it's all first-hand experience personally. Uh, I have been MIG welding for quite some time, but TIG is something new that I picked up recently as far as the machine. Uh, for those who follow the stories and Instagram, whatever, uh, I picked up the Everlast um, uh, machine, which has been very good for me. I think it's a 252, it's the bigger one. Uh, because I do like to work with finer as well as thicker materials. So this is a quarter inch plate. I mean, for my purposes, I think this is not too bad. And again, I'm learning, I'm still working out the fine details as far as how to sharpen those uh, tungsten bits, whatever, and um, all the other fine detail. So now that we got this thing done, I need to figure out how I'm gonna bolt it up as far as uh, what kind of hardware I'm going to use because what I'd like to do on the bottom here it's still warm um, what I like to do on the bottom here is to see if I can uh, do some kind of a countersink bolts or protective washers for those who are in a skid game not the first time uh, they'll know probably what I'm talking about so they're like a A-shaped washers where they they tuck in the bolts um, so they don't get scraped up or beat up or you don't get hang, hung up with those uh, when you're crawling over whatever possible obstacle for example now I don't plan to rock crawl this thing a whole lot I guess we'll see uh, but this is an overlander so these skids are more or less to protect the vehicle from unforeseeable circumstances such as going over the brush um, certain just objects that might be hidden in a snow type of wheeling situation or something um, but in general 
we can always make another one if we bust this one up so um i think it's good for now so let's get this thing bolted up all right that thing is in i'm happy with the outcome honestly um i think result is pretty good so main thing was to protect all that stuff right there all that little plumbing that you see the oil filter and everything um from branches and from anything hitting while we're on the trail this thing came out pretty slick and smooth underneath i mean basically I'm not sure if I would call it a whole lot as a basher plate, uh, but I think it will do. So next thing, I'm gonna look into milling some washers here uh, that will allow things to skid over. So like a quarter inch thick washer maybe uh, that will do the job. I mean, they're for sale. They're like five bucks by AGM, all German motors or something it's called brand. Um, and then the other thing I noticed is actually milling and sandwiching the two panels together. I don't know if the camera shows the angle, but this thing got kind of bent out. So I think this making it too thin, if that makes sense. So for future reference, I think I might just consider taking this all the way out, quarter inch, and then only uh, basically sandwiching the two panels together and then just taking the angle, taking the edge off of this plate here um or maybe not even that i mean just let it ride as it is you know it's not too bad yeah these uh eight uh, m8 bolts are not gonna do a whole lot of work but they'll hold now um sf creations brace there i just bought that thing i didn't even bother uh, building my own sf creations brace for uh subframe does the job fairly well let's get under this one I know a lot of these guys who are watching think it'll be interesting to see how things come out so main thing here the the middle skid you can see that i have access open to service the diff if anything plus i think the diff will uh the diff right there uh, it will actually hit the the skid if you don't cut that out that's my uh kind of view on it so now i have to see if i can somehow protect this area a little bit maybe do some kind of a skid that will protect the transmission pan uh, and then do some kind of a bolt on for the transfer case. And in general, in general, I think this is pretty good wrap up. Um, you can see probably, I'm assuming, uh, the fuel tank bracket right there got a branch stuck in it or something. So that's, that's a right there, something that catches on. Um, this exhaust is just crap because it just catches everything a kid. So we'll have to work on that as well. And the next thing I need to figure out is how to get sliders in here. So that's another project for another weekend. But for now, whew, get a little lightheaded. So thanks for tuning in. Again, check out the other videos. I'll post some bubbles here and there in the end of the video uh, for you guys to check out. And what else? Subscribe and comment, like, share, and... I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.